Hey everybody, how you doing today? Hope you all had a great weekend. Mine was pretty busy. Like, almost feel like I didn't really have that much of a weekend, but I mean, it, it was mostly fun stuff, but <clears throat> I don't know. I wouldn't really call it relaxing, but <laughs> sometimes you just have them like that. But let's go ahead and get to some programming, I guess. Let me, let me rearrange these. That's better. Okay, so we've been working on the lobby screen for a while now. And it's really one of the last big missing parts of this project, so it'll be really nice to finish it. Um, and I did have a little bit of time Friday night to try and iron out some bugs just because... We left, um, the Friday stream with some strange bugs. I didn't really want to have to spend forever trying to debug it, um, today, um, today, so. So yeah, anyway, basically now, the lobby, or the server, doesn't care really at all about the lobby configuration. It just keeps track of different connections. And then it's up to the host to assign them to a slot here in the lobby, which will also determine like what player they are in the game. So we can see right now, um, here is the server, the client list, and it just has the test username, which is the host. And then it has, um, it's been assigned to the slot zero, which we can see here as well. And so there's three open slots that I've used to. The server would have like, empty clients waiting for a connection, but now the server doesn't really care. And um, you can see when I connect to the server with another client, um, the server will just tell um, the host that another client has connected. And then um, the host will just assign it a slot in the lobby. Um, so let's go ahead and test that real quick before I move on. Yeah, and I like this much better. It's a little, like in most multiplayer games, you don't really want to give the host this much power. But um, just because of the way the architecture of this game is setting up, it's going to be much easier. And um, so we don't have a centralized server that controls all the the game logic and for the specific project mostly because of modding and you don't really want to have to run the mods on a server that doesn't sound like a great idea so and also um cheating is a lot easier to like usually the reason why you don't have a centralized server is because you'd want to be able to use that server to make sure that nobody cheats but um with this game since it's turn-based it's I mean, we have enough time to validate everybody's um, commands, and so it's not really that difficult to tell if they're cheating somehow. All right, so on this client, we'll join the game, and then in the editor, I'll go ahead and create it. So yeah, this is fine. And then this one, I need to rename the username, because otherwise um, it would complain that they're not that the usernames aren't unique. So we'll just do this. Okay, so now we can see here that I have this test client has been assigned, assi assigned to slot one. And I can look in the de debug here and see that the server has two connections here. And, um, and then, yeah, it's been assigned to the slot. So if we had more connections, they would also go in here. Um, Maybe I can run another instance. Okay, so let's try it one more time. This will be test client two. Okay, so it does work. I've never actually tried it with three clients, but yeah, no problem. So I think uh, what would happen 
Well, nothing would happen right now if I tried to join with five. The It's just there'd be another connection up here, but I wouldn't have a slot. Um, I guess we can... I don't think my computer will explode running five instances of this game. It's not very... Um, resource intensive, so test client three. Okay, that pops up here. And then we'll just have one more. I think what will happen is there'll just be another connection up here, but the lobby will just not, like obviously it won't expand. In the final version, we wanna let the player know that there's another connection or we would just refuse. Okay, so it, obviously this one doesn't have a slot, but Okay, it does appear here. I guess we have test client four. So yeah, either the server would need to kick that person, or not the server, um, the lobby would just need to send a kick command for this um, client. Probably it'd be even better if I could somehow have the server just refuse it outright. Um, yeah, so we'll um, have to see about that, but anyway, at least there are no errors. Yeah, okay, we'll close all these for now. Alright, so let me see, um, it'd be nice. Okay, this was actually not an issue. So I guess uh, server um, validation should not allow players if there are no empty. I thought I turned off songs with lyrics. They tend to distract me too much when I'm trying to stream, but um, anyway, um, yeah, we should not allow players if there are no, um, okay, let's call it open slots. And I'm not really sure how we would do this. Because um, it'd be nice if the server would reject you like automatically while you're still on the joining screen instead of trying to load into the lobby and then the player would kick you and then and then you get kicked out there. That doesn't seem as polished. So ideally, maybe the host can like update some validation parameters. I guess it could be as easy as just accepting new connections, but then we'd also like, sometimes we'd only want to let someone reconnect. So we'd only want to let in specific usernames. Okay. Yeah, host should be able to disable uh, new clients, and then host should be able to define a list of usernames that can join. Yes, but I don't think I'll do that today because I'm kind of... <laughs> I think I should do the rest of the system before I worry about that.
And yeah, because the easiest way is that if somebody joined, the host could just kick them. But again, it's just not that polished like that, so I'd rather not. Okay, so let's see. Close some of these folders. Okay, so this is the class that gets, um, um, messages whenever there's new clients. And what it really does is just try to find an assigned slot for a client. And if it doesn't have one, then it gives it a new slot. So what would happen if Okay, so it'd return false if it can't assign a new slot. Really, this change is kind of weird. Well, I guess it's still true, but um, let's see. Cool. Found slot. And then change. Okay. Yeah, this just means, uh, that's kind of confusing. That's kind of a shorthand for doing this, but it's not that common. So we'll just um, do it like that. So yeah, there'll be a change if change is already true or we found a slot. But I guess if found slot is false, then we'll want to send a kick command. Um. Oh, we already have the kick command event, don't I? Oh, but there's no s slot assigned to it. I don't really want to create this class. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. I guess we can go ahead and do it now because at some point I'm going to need to set up that button. Okay, so kick client message. Okay, and we need to subscribe from message base because that's Unity's, or not subscribe, um, inherit from message base because that's um, the base class that Unity uses to send these messages over the network. And really all this is going to have is, um, oh no, go by username. So username, and I think that's it. So here on the server, when we subscribe to that, I guess I'll just call this a kick manager. And let me find out how I, because there's a specific way you need to deal with our receiving those messages. This is going to subscribe, or not subscribe, <laughs> I keep on saying that, inherit from, inherit from the flow logic container, which just enables events on this class. Let me see. Um... Okay, so I do just register it simply like that. I guess I need to... Okay, so these keys are the channels that you send a message on. And really, we just need this kick player. And I put C at the beginning if it originates from a client, and S if it originates from the server. OK, 
Okay, so I'll need something like this. Um, I guess I'll pretty much only need the connections class. Okay, and so this would be C dot kick player. All right, and this error still exists because I need to also get the event queue and pass it up to my parent class. Events. All right. Um, so first, um, I would get. I guess first I should make sure that. Oh right, that this is the host client. So how I do that is um, if. So var connection equals cons dot. Connected net message. Oops. Dot connection and then connection ID. And if the connection is trusted, which means it's been validated, and the connection dot. Oh, no, that's not how I do it. Connections dot host connection equals this connection ID. Well, since I use it twice, I should, guess I should. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, yeah, so if this is the host connection, then now I can finally get the kick message out of there. So that'd be... Okay, I have this helper class because reading network messages, um, we have to be a little careful about cer certain things. So this class just helps with that. Okay, what's it not like? Have to use with type arguments. Oh, I forgot the, yeah, the method name. It's kind of important. So if a message does not equal null and string is null or empty message dot username is false. Okay. Um, let me see here. So a lot of places I need to have something to check if usernames are identical. And I'm kind of thinking I should add this into this networking class so that both, um, so that the server and the client will both have the same logic. Let me say a uh, username equal our comparer. Okay, and we'll just, I have uh, this already, I think, here. So let me I'll copy this. And we can just use the username, or rename, username, comparer dot, oh, it doesn't have the function yet. Okay, so what's it all like about that? Not declare. Oh yeah, it should be static. I can spell it. And so then down here, 
equal a b okay i can just go like that no oh because it's gonna confuse yeah Anyway, so I have that now, and now I can use that same method in this kick manager. So we need to loop through every active connection, so for each connection and connections connected, connection dot, oh, I just need the values here actually. So I have connection dot, well, do I have to check if it's trusted? I guess so, because if it's not trusted, then it won't have a username, so. And username compare dot equal connection username message username. Then connection dot force disconnect. We set that to true. Oh, I can't do that. So yeah, because I'm using this variable here. What should I call this? Host connection, I guess. I think that's all I have to do here. So this is relatively simple. So in the server game, I need to instantiate this class. Is there anything else I need to do here? Like disassociate. No, I think it's fine. I could set it as not trusted anymore. But no, I think that would lead to some bugs. Okay, so anyway, this is fine now. Let's see, so really I just need to, here I need to fire some event, so I need to make the client side class that will kick or send that message. Let's just have a new um, kick message sender. So I guess I should keep on sending a message until I see that that client has been kicked. And also we'd only do this if we're the host. So for one thing I need the client info and then I need um, a local connection. And then I'll need to have my message sender. Okay, and the kick command, or the kick message can only have one username. So I can either change that to be an array, or I'll need to have multiple messages. Um, let's change it to an array, I think that'd be better. So now I need to go back here. Okay, let's make a helper class here. So private void try kick. Okay, so if username, oh wait. A string is null or empty. Username is false. Okay, so that's fine. Get rid of. Okay, so instead of this, I need to check to make sure that the username's array is not null. 
Okay, so this should be for each username and message usernames. There we go. Okay, so I think that's all I need here. Um, I guess, yeah, I will need just one message sender. Okay, and this should be a flow logic container as well. Yeah, I wanted to generate the constructor this way. So for this, I need what's that class called? Net message send requests. Okay, and then I also need the event queue, which I can't get. Can't get it to generate that automatically, unfortunately. So base events. All right, and so the sender equals new. Um, net messages. Um, I won't do the message yet. And then the message key would be C kick player. Let's go ahead and use that namespace. Okay, and now it's going to ask for a retry period. So I have message periods. Okay, I don't have like a command period, so I'll add that. Um, probably something pretty short as well. Okay, and so now I'll need to listen for whenever the client info is updated and then also whenever we get some kick event. So let me see. Class. I guess that should be public. Kick. Um, client command and this will need to have a username associated with it So if I do kick more than one player at once, we'll need to like combine all of these commands into one network message. Oh, well, this will be okay. I was going to say, we'll generate some garbage the way I was planning to do it because I'm going to pretty much regenerate this message every time we receive this command, which could happen multiple times a frame, but um, it's not really a huge deal because it's not like this is going to happen every update. Okay, and then we'll also have new um, what's it called? Yeah, client info change, but I need the event listener for that. So event exists Listener. Go on client change. Um, did I spell that wrong? Oh, I did. So I guess the best way to do this would be to have a list of um, strings for usernames to kick. 
And then whenever we get this command... Okay, I know what I should do. We should just add this to this list. And we should make sure that it's unique. So, cool, unique equals true. And then for each bar, username and usernames to kick. If username, or what is it? Username compare. Okay, that doesn't help me. There we go. Equal command. Oh, this should be public. That's why it wasn't showing up there. I think the default is protected, which means only this class and anything that inherits from it can see it. So yeah, if that's equal to the username in the list, then we would set unique to false. Okay, and then if unique, then we just would add it to this username to kick. I think there's a better way to do this, but um, also I should check if command or if string is null or empty command username. We can also just return right away because we don't want to add a null username to this list. Okay. Um, and I'll wait until the next update to actually start sending the message, I think. Okay, so on client change. Whenever we receive this, though, we should refresh immediately, but... I guess I'll go ahead and write that function. So private void refresh message. Okay, so for each of our username and usernames to kick. Okay, so unfortunately there's not a super easy way to do it. Um, I guess what I should do, yeah, since we're using this compare, I can't like just say it, or ask if this list contains this username. So I need to break this out. So waiting on username. So really, I guess I should, yeah, I don't have to pass that stuff, so string username. Okay, I'll rearrange this a bit. So we actually just return false here. And I can rearrange this code now. So if waiting on username, command username is false. And also if string null is null or empty is false. Then we would add it. So now I can get rid of that code. Okay, so what I need to do is look through every... I guess I should actually look through every client. Oh wait. How would I do this? Okay, so I was going to try to reuse this function, but I think I actually should not. Private void client exists. Or right, let's see. Does or is client connected? I need to do the same thing except loop through the clients here. So for each client in client. Oh, let's see. Clients dot active if username compare equal username to client username will return true otherwise it will return false okay so now I'm gonna look through here and if 
Uh, I can't even... Okay, so I really want to be able to remove something from this list as I'm uh, looping through it, but I can't do that if I use a for each, so I should remake it as just a normal for loop. And when you want to remove something, you should go th or iterate backwards. It just makes it easier like, to not um, skip over anything. So, yeah. so to do that, you start at the end of the list. You check to make sure i is always positive and that, and then you subtract from i. So basically, string, or I really don't need to do that. So if is client connected, usernames to kick, i is, if this is false, then that means this client has been kicked, so I can remove it from the list. I, and then we want to refresh the message here. Okay, so let me see. Let's, um, change. We'll keep the, the, a track of this. So change is, I guess it'd only be a change if we added something there, so it's true. Okay, and then we'll have a tick or if change refresh message. And then here we'll set change to false. So then we have um, Cinder. Then Cinder active equals Cinder message does not equal null. Oh, only one equals there. So if um, usernames to kick is greater than zero, then we'll actually have a message here. Otherwise, we'll return null. So return new kick client command, or that's not it. Kick client message. And then usernames is just um, Usernames to kick to array. Okay, so I think that's all I have to do here. Let's go ahead and add this to the... Uh, where is it? The game class. And what? I guess it can just be on the normal ticking order. So networking, kick, message sender. Right, and also, I actually remember this time I need to create this list so it's not, I don't get a null reference. Okay, and now um, the client update watcher would just send that kick message sender. So events Q kick client command. Why is it not letting me set the username? Oh, I forgot the new keyword. No, not mu. Okay, so username equals client dot username. Uh, maybe also the kick message sender should check to make sure that the client exists. So also here is client connected. So we'll go ahead and do that. So now we've got three things going on here. 
Yeah, because if the client is already disconnected, we don't need to kick them. So that's probably a good thing to do. All right. Um, let's test it, but I want to make it a little easier. We don't have to create five instances of the the second client. I'm going to just change it so the game starts up with just two slots. Alright, so first of all, let's make sure there's no errors here before I go building the separate player and then have to rebuild it. So that's kind of, well, that's not supported yet, so that doesn't do anything. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and build a second client. And what should happen, it'll let one person go, but then the next person, it will validate and then immediately kick them because there's no spot. And this is like the unpolished thing I was speaking about earlier. I wish, well, I'm going to make it so that um, the host will just tell the server not to accept any more clients after a certain point. But we can do that later. If this will run. Okay, so create. And we'll join with test client one here. Okay, so yeah, that works fine. And then we'll build one more. Or start up one more. Okay, test client two. Should connect. Oh, I didn't get kicked. What's going on? This client two is still here. Let's see. So the clients are the server sending out this information to the clients and then um, client info change. My connection watcher, client update watcher, and the kick client command all reacted to that. Oh, the kick client command was queued. And then the kick message sender reacted to the kick client command. But that's it. It didn't actually send the message out. Okay, so there's some bug there, obviously. Gonna be slightly annoying to test. So what I need to do? Okay, let's first just walk through the code to see if there's some easy to miss logic error. So we passed that, whatever even sent the message, so. That is not zero. Okay, well it got the kick client command, right? Yeah, right here. I 
I also got the client info changed. I wonder if it deleted. Well, let's see. So it starts here, command, so the string is not empty. Maybe one thing I could do is add a two string here, which might help. Uh, string, format, kick, client, command. Okay, but anyway, so you can tell the username is not null or empty. So then we go to waiting on username. And so we look through every username here. And if they're equal, we return. F oh, I think this is inverted. So yeah, we return true if we're waiting and then this should be false. Okay, so if we're waiting on username is false. I think that was the error. And then is client connected? We look through every client to see if they're equal. And if it's equal, then return true. Okay, so on client change, we just look through to see if this client is no longer connected. And if it's no longer connected, we can just remove it. Okay, I think that was the error. And I think I can actually test this without rebuilding the clients because I only changed the kick manager, which the clients don't actually need. Oh, that's another thing I should do. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and write it, but I won't save it. I should disregard these commands unless the local connection is host. Oh. And I guess that's only valid if we're connected at this point, so I should check that as well. Eight equals connected. Okay. Let us rename that one. Okay, yeah, so I added, I got added, but then disconnected immediately. In the final game, um, we need to exit out of the lobby at this point, obviously. But also, we should just, the host should just configure the server to not even allow this player to connect in the first place. But uh, we can do that at some other point. Let's look at the messages. Oh, it's still sending kick players. Why? Specified method is not supported. Oh, I know what's going on. Okay. Yeah, there's some... I have it so that you can't change the message if the sender is active. So what I need to do is set sender active false and then get the message. Um, let's actually do it this way. So var message equals get message. Okay, well that didn't actually change much, but... Yeah, so we just have to deactivate this first, and then set the message, and then I can reactivate it. And it's actually better this way, because that also resets the, the send timer. Um, but everything still worked out okay, it just... Um, caused an error, which kind of messed things up. And let's check it one more time. I accidentally closed the folder. I'll close that to clean this up a bit. Yeah, so now I want to check to make sure that that um, message stops being sent. I thought you already compiled. Oh, okay. I just didn't realize that it was already started. I 
I need to find a way to like, I've seen people color the, the interface if they're in play mode. That would be nice because it's really hard to tell sometimes if Unity is compiling or not. So again, one, and we'll create another one. Okay, so I got disconnected. But we still got an error. Oh, it's just saying disconnected. Oh, okay. I was going to say, why is connect change test username? I think just the two string method there is a little weird. But client. So, yeah, so the kick message is definitely not sending anymore, which is good to see. Okay, so I think we're done with that. I guess I'll fix that two string real quick while I'm thinking about it. I just need to add a space there. I guess a semicolon might be a good idea. Or that's just a colon, but. Okay, so I guess I'll move this back up to four. Um, okay, so I guess we're finally done with that project and I guess I should make more um what's the word I guess more managers for the different UI elements so first of all we can change the player type but it doesn't really do much I think go to debug you can see as I move it, it does get updated here. But what should happen, I think, is that because like if I change this to AI, it does wipe this. But um, oh, well, I guess that did actually use it. But it should. Well, first of all, it shouldn't let me kick the host from the game. Unless I'm going to be a spectator, which would be fine. And then it also should... Like, I don't think it should let you change this type through this drop-down menu if there's a player connected there. You should have to kick that player, I think. Well, I guess we could leave it, but then if you tried to click there, it would, like give you some kind of dialogue pop-up that you'd have to click yes or no. Hmm, I'm not sure how to do that dialogue window in Unity. Let me see. Okay, so Unity, GUI, dialogue. I have like a this code you can use. So how does this work? Well, unfortunately, it's a video which I don't really want to watch right now. And that's in the editor. I don't think it's that difficult. I would just have a different UI canvas. I think that the difficult thing would be somehow disabling input from this canvas while we're working on it. This might be a, a fun little project and it'll definitely be useful. 
All right, so let's switch to the lobby scene. So I think I need to build another canvas because I don't think I can use... Well, maybe... No, I don't think I need another canvas. I can just put it on top and will that work? I'm not sure how to like disable input from everything while this other dialog box is visible. You see. Okay, well I guess if I have this as a raycast target and make sure it's below everything else, then it would not let you click on anything. Let me test that out. Yeah. Okay, well that's actually pretty simple. So if I turn this off, will let me click on the button? And if I turn this off, it does let me click on the button. Okay, well that's actually not difficult. So I just have this panel and I could even just turn off the image if I wanted and I think it would, oh well no. I th yeah, so I, what I'd have to do if I wanted it to actually be transparent is I would just set alpha to zero. But I guess having a little bit of a uh, fade is good. Actually, be like black. Why oh, can you not see it anymore? Oh, because it's turned off. Um, I guess it actually shouldn't be in the visible area, because it should actually be outside of that. Okay, so let's rename this to, I don't know, alert panel. And we'll just try to make a generic alert, like yes or no box. I'm trying to think if there'd be any reason. Well, I guess if we ever needed something with more buttons or something, then it wouldn't really be that difficult to have another um, little panel. So I want to, I guess, create another panel above this. So UI. This will just be a background for the window. So that should be fine. It doesn't really matter that much. I'm trying to decide how I want it to look, but I don't know if I want it to stretch actually, but let's see. So the anchors, let's have it, I guess let's just have it anchor to the center of the screen and it will be a specific size. Probably too tall. So it does have some text and then yes or no buttons. It doesn't really have to look super pretty. Um, so create UI text. Enter it. It doesn't look centered. Uh, probably because the... Um, the size of the text actually isn't the actual text 
size yet. Oh, and also this is not centered, so if I do that, then it should be centered. Okay, and also let's make this bigger. This will be like a title. That's probably too big. 28. And again, it doesn't really have to be super pretty right now. And then this will be the actual alert. How do I want to do this? I guess I'll just have it centered. And yeah, it should wrap. So what would happen if... I'd act, okay, I don't actually want a content size fitter here because it should... The width should be based on the... Why is it not letting me set the width? I was going to say the width should actually be based on the size of its parent. Probably the same thing should happen for the text, but... X, we'll just set this to zero and one. Oops. The same thing for this one. Okay, but I still don't know why it didn't let me set the height. I guess there's just no reason to set the width and height for a text element. It's thanks. Okay, so this should be the title text. And, um,. Body text, and then we'll have two buttons. Probably the best way to do this is actually to have like a button parent object here. So rect transform. And if I add a horizontal layout group, it should lay out the buttons nicely. How high are these? 30, so I guess I'll set the height to 30 here as well. Oops. And then we can tell the child to force to expand height, but then the child controls their width. Okay, and they get the button to size automatically to the text. I think I have to use another t horizontal layout group. And why'd the text disappear? Middle center. Okay, and I have to say this force expand because it gets the button to use the... Or what's going on there, actually? Oh, no, you don't want the force expand because then it would... The button... I don't know. Well, this works how I want it. Um, oh yeah, and then I want a little bit of space on the edges, so we can just add some 16, 16. Okay, so this will be, um, I guess, we should let you edit this text too, but I'll just put it as okay. Button, and... Um, cancel button. Okay, so why did the text suddenly shrink?
Oh. Oh, right. I need to set this to zero, zero. Because I was having that issue before where it was saying it was 250 points inside from the edges. So that actually was having no width at all. So, child controls are width. I don't actually want them to have to fill this whole area. Yeah, so that's better. Okay, so I think that works, and I guess I'll just move this down. Doesn't really matter where. A bit too far. I don't, yeah, it's not that really a big deal. So I guess this should actually. I need to change these as well. I actually want it to center correctly. And the height of this is not letting me set it. What would happen if I did something like this? Okay, it doesn't deal with long words very well. Oh, well, it's at the truncate, so I guess I should do... Okay, so if I do overflow... Okay. Then I'll keep doing text. Okay, well, that's fine. So I'm clicking, that works, and then, but I can't click anything behind here. Now I just need to make a class and probably, well, I don't know, it just depends how I want to do it. I don't know. I was going to say, if I should make this available to other... Uh, I don't know, why not? I could make this whole thing a prefab. And then this, this, all these scripts could be used in other scenes as well. Which would probably be fine, because I don't think this is going to have anything really unique to the lobby. I think that's probably a good idea. Um. But uh, let's just wait a second. I guess this will go in the UI helpers and so to button dialog. I think it's just I think it's built like this when it's a window. Uh, yeah, this will be a flow logic container. Oh, actually, this should be the mono behavior. So yeah, little button dialog or two button dialog. Mono behavior. And I need to make this public. And this will have the text for the title. And text for the um, alert. I'm just trying to think, do I want to even like maybe add support for more buttons? Because it's not, it would be pretty simple to add more because I could just duplicate. Yeah, and it, see, it's, it fits it already. But I don't really know if I'd have any reason for more than two buttons. So, yeah, I'm not, I, th yeah, I think I won't over engineer it. So let's do, I guess this will be button text. And then I'll need the actual button classes as well. I 
it's gonna finish compiling before I can actually click anywhere. Um, I should change the alert to the body text actually. goes and what else I guess that's all I have to do here so now I need some way some manager class to button dialog manager and this will be the flow logic container and I'll need a couple events let's see public this shouldn't be public actually so show to button dialog and this will just be an event Dialogues can actually get kind of complicated. But I'm not sure if I want to worry about it yet, because like I said, I don't want to try and over-engineer it. Well, I guess this two-button dialogue is pretty much as simple as it gets, so... I just... Do I want to be able to send things through this event, or should I have, like, this dialogue manager instead be a class that I call with a function? I guess since I'm going to be sending so much data through it, I, I don't really know if passing it as an event is that helpful. Yeah. Um, well, I guess one good thing is that if I ever do change this class, then I won't have to change anything that calls the event. So um, I think this will be okay. So... I can type string, geez. Title, body, so button one text, button two text, and I guess that's about it. And then well, I guess we should have a public class close to button dialog the only other thing I could think of is you might want to see if the button dialog is open but when you get to, into that kind of thing it's you almost need like a separate dialog manager that um, allows multiple dialogues on the screen which we might at some point we might need but But probably how I would do that is I would have a separate class that would then call this event. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think I, I have a tendency to overthink interface things. Um, I think this will just need the event queue. Find the colon key. All right. Um, I will need the uh, two button dialogue mono behavior. Oh, yeah. And this also interesting. Okay, I think the way I'll do this is it'll have a link, to, or it'll assume that this two-button dialog is in the resources folder. 
And then it can load it from there and grab this. Right, so tickables, adds new event. I guess we'll just do the latest event listener. So actually, if a close and show command happen at the same time, I guess we should, I think I'll assume the show command is the most recent, so it should run after that. Or the show command should take priority. Okay, so here, um, if dialog is null, or does not equal null, then I would just set dialog um, game object set active false. Also, I just realized that probably yeah, this object should go on the alert panel. Come on, let me copy, and then I'll remove this one and place it here. Because it actually, this is kind of the, um, the parent because it's what blocks the clicks to the anything below it. So let's just name this to the, rename that to the window. Okay, so on show command, first off, if the dialog doesn't exist, we should load it. Dialog equals Unity Engine Resources Load Game Object. Oh, yeah. First, we gotta get the prefab. Um, let's just should be uh, right here. Two button dialog. Our I think I already have a UI folder, so we'll do that. UI two button dialog. Oh, I have audio. Okay, and then dialog equals game object dot instantiate. It should be another game object prefab. Oh, and, and the problem is, how do I get the parent? And what happens when you change scenes? Uh, well, no, this is still fine. Um, Okay, yeah, I just got to change the way this is done, actually. So I will have to do IUI setup, I think. And I'm going to need that game object registry to get the parent for this. So game object registry. Okay, so we'll go ahead and create it in this IUI setup. But first I need the parent, so uh, dialog parent is registry. Well, could I just, uh, maybe I don't need the registry and I can just call the, or get a reference to the canvas because there should only be one canvas. Um. I don't know, let's not assume that. We can just 
find dialogue parent um, transform okay so now that's parented to there I need to make sure it's last what's wrong with this Oh, right. So game object. Okay, so um, dialogue parent. Um, I don't know. Is this going to... Not sure if this is going to work like this. Maybe there should be something else that should set up. Uh, well, I'll just leave it right now because for now, we, this is going to be the only dialogue. If we have more dialogues, then... Yeah, let's just assume, actually, that this is already created, so we won't create it. So it'll be kind of like this, actually. Um, yeah, so we won't even need the resources, but I can still make it a prefab. Yeah, so okay, kind of did a lot of work here for no reason. We don't need this anymore. So yeah, on IUI setup, we'll just call dialog is game object find object of type two button dialog. So there should only ever be one in a scene, so this will be fine. So on show command. If the dialog doesn't exist, we can't do anything yet, so it's been called too early. Let's return. But yeah, also, yeah, we should set it to inactive now. Okay, so now we can finally set up this text. Yeah, I was really, I was overthinking things after all. So, title is command. Title. Oh, I got a, a dot text. Dialog body text is command dot body. Dialog. Button. Uh, a button text zero. Okay, what is it? Oh, button text. That makes sense is command button one text and i guess if this is null then we'll just set this to okay and cancel These aren't really needed, but there's no harm in it. Okay, so that is actually pretty simple. Let's create a UI folder here. Can delete these because that's these are the old this is the old train system So what I need to do now is in the lobby controller, I just need to set up that manager. So add 
Specialize UX. Our UI helpers. Two button dialog. And it could just be uh, on the normal UX. Um, ticking priority. Okay, so now when I enter this scene, this title should disappear because the manager will hide it. Or this dialogue should disappear. Okay. Okay, so anyway, that was a bit of a detour, but let's go back to... Um, where is it? The slot input manager. So what I need to do here is... Actually, what? I figured that this input... How do I want to do this, actually? Okay, well, I guess um, I was thinking that because like if you change a player slot to an AI, we need to also send a kick command to the server. But now it doesn't really matter the order because again, the server doesn't actually care about the lobby at all. But probably and then I was trying to think, should we send the kick command here or should the UI send it? But I think it'd be better to send it here and then the UI just won't actually set this type input um, unless the OK button is clicked in the dialog. So let me see here. So if we have it if it's a player or a spectator, then we would need to, and we send it, and we set the type to something besides a player or a spectator, then we might kick them, or we would have to kick them. So we need to send a message. Uh, which I guess I should do. So Google was player equals slot type is player. Um, actually, let's have a helper function for this because if it's a guest player, then we don't actually kick them. Also, if we kick a player, And they have a guest. Then we need to also remove all those guests of that player. So. That's kind of interesting. Let me see. Probably should I just have a helper class that's like remove guests. So private bool. Is. I guess is player with client. Or let's see. Let's change it to is slot with client. So we'd switch. Um, I guess I need to get the slot. Switch slot dot sort. Okay, so if it's a player, then we return slot is guest is false. If it's a spectator, we return true. 
Uh, anything else? We return false. Okay, so this would be had client equals is plot with client. To just to had a client. If um, had client does not equal is slot with client now. After changing around stuff, then we'll need to send a kit command. So events. Um, send our Q new kick client command. Oh, the username has a, yeah, it would have been wiped already. So okay. also if we change it from something besides just player, we need to wipe all the guests, so we'll deal with that. Let me see. Um, might be a better way to do this. So this just basically wipes different values. All right, so if slot type, okay, let's see if add client and this slot with client. It's false. Let's do it up here, I think. Now the username hadn't been hasn't been wiped yet. So uh, username is slot dot username. Okay, and then if okay, so we need to switch slot dot type. So if it's an AI or none, then we need to wipe the username. Name is null. And then if slot type does not equal AI, we need to wipe the AI script. And then if slot Type is not equal player or slot is guest is false, then we need to wipe the guest nickname. Okay, so I think that's a little better than using it, doing something like that. The only other thing I need to do is. Um, Yeah, remove any slots that were parented to a specific, like nothing can be a guest. Or wait, how would that work actually? Well, I guess I wouldn't remove them right now. So I was gonna say, um, if a slot is a guest to a player that doesn't exist, I would wipe it. But I guess I don't have to do that. It's just we wouldn't let the host um, say that they're ready because the, um, I guess the slot configuration doesn't make sense. So they'd have to fix that up. Um, yeah, so I think yeah, that'll be easier than wiping those values. OK, 
Okay, so am I missing anything? We have player AI and spectator. Okay, so just those three. All right. Oh, yeah, no, nothing there right now. Um, I think it'll work if I just use this client. Let's try it out. Even though we have changed a lot of code, nothing of it actually has to do with connecting to the server, so. Okay, and then I just want to join. I guess one. Okay, so that's working. So if I change this to an AI, it should just disconnect that person. And yeah, they are disconnected, and we can make sure that they're gone here. So if I change this to a spectator, though, I'm still connected. And if I change to a guest... What happened there? Oh yeah, it just shut down the whole... Shut down everything because it's not... Um, <laughs> if you disconnect the host, the server just shuts down, which makes sense. Okay, it did work, but I noticed it didn't clear my username. I think that's because I don't clear it if you're a guest, but I don't think you should clear the username, actually, because it makes sense that the username would stick around, because that basically tells what user the guest is are the parent user for that guest. Oh, uh, I don't know, actually. Okay, let's see. Um, if what type equals spectator, or right, let's see. Actually, we'd only want... Oh, no, that's not true. Uh, let's just leave it. I think it'll be okay. All right, so now on the UI side of things, I need to go and add that dialogue. So where would that be? Type. Yeah, drop-down manager. Okay, so right now we just go ahead and add this queue. Um, add another function, so private void, I guess try open dialog, is that the right way to say it? So what I really want to do is like just hold on to an event until the dialogue. Oh, yeah. Also, there's no way that we yeah, can get a callback from the dialogue, I just realized. So the dialogue really needs a an event as well. Let me see. So public class to button dialogue twice and I guess we'll just return the index of the button okay this is kind of <laughs> silly I forgot to subscribe to the buttons Okay, since 
I only have two buttons. It'll be easy to subscribe to both. So, um, buttons zero on click add listener. Okay. So let's say on. Okay. Uh, button press. You could do this also using the Lambda expressions like I did for, I think the slot drop downs, but again, that makes it difficult to unregister these listeners. So, and again, since I am not supporting more than two buttons, I don't think there's a reason to complicate things that much. And then I just want to override the dispose to Um, unregister those lis listeners, so dialog button zero, on click, remove listener. Buttons one, on click, remove listener. All right, so here we would just, um, I don't think I have to do any validation, so events add Oh yeah, Q. New um, to dialog choice. Press index zero. That should be a comma. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, and now we can just listen for this event to see when the dialog choice is made. Um, I could go ahead and close the dialogue at this point. Um, but I think maybe better not to. Okay, so we'll just do the bool and we'll pass in this event. Okay, so really we want to use that same thing to see if a lobby slot has a client associated or not, but I, I don't want to use the same function because it might be a little different for the UI than the system. So I think I'm happy with copying and pasting it. Okay. So if, oh, also I should change this instead of just using the slot index that will pass in a type. And then is guest. Do I have the lobby parameters? Oh, good, I do. So e dot index. So if um, is slot with client, slot type, slot is guest. Then, oh yeah. And so if it is a slot with client and is slot with client, we type is false, then we'll want to open the dialog. So we'd return true here. Otherwise we'd return false and we can go ahead and queue the event. Try open dialog is false. Okay. Another thing. I don't know. I have a f feeling in the back of my mind that the system is a little messy. I wish that there was a better way. I could almost be easier. Uh, I don't know if I could like specify a callback and then the dialogue manager would just call that instead of having to listen to events and everything. But I guess we'll see. 
how this works out. So anyway, events. Q, new, two, button. Show two button dialog. Title will be, um, Morning. Body. Changing this slot to that type will disconnect the player. And then say OK, and I guess the other one will be cancel. And also I need to save this and probably keep uh, keep a boolean that the dialogue is open. Yeah, I don't I don't know. This is seeming quite messy to me. I might think of over the day trying to think of a better idea. Because there's no easy way to tell if the dialogue is open or not, and it's not extensible for multiple dialogues, so I just really don't like basing code on it, but like I said before, I don't want to like overthink things before it's needed. Oh, also, we'd only want to... This is slot with client should only be true if there's actually a client that's um, associated here. So also, oh, I should set it I should make sure that there's a client that's connected before it gives the warning. Like we won't need to kick our client that's not connected. Because username could be null here as well. Let me see. But do I really need to do that because I think this kick cut client command will just fail if the username is not currently connected, so it doesn't actually matter. I think I might just, right, because the, the client kick messenger just doesn't even send the command if the client isn't connected or the username is null, so um, yeah, I think that's fine. So yeah, the kick client manager will not issue messages if the username is null or the or there is no connected client with that username so it's okay not to check for those things But I guess that's not really, I shouldn't actually trust that. Well, maybe it's okay. I will leave it for now. Anyway, um, so where was I? Oh, right. So here, I was thinking about the dialogue. Because I feel like this shouldn't really be the... Um, dialog, okay, event. It shouldn't really be the job of this class to keep track of if there's a dialog visible or not. Because it, that'd be really easy to um, get the state um, corrupted. Visible. So anyway, we'd want to set dialog. Visible to true and dialog. Okay, event. Let's see. So also, whenever this match parameters changes, we should close the dialog, I think. And maybe even here, too.
Quote our close to button dialogue. Right, we should only do this if our dialogue visible is true. Oops. Oh, I don't need to do that. So dialogue visible false, and I guess we can get rid of the dialogue okay event. Now I need to listen for the button. Two button dialogue choice. Oh, the so yeah, latest event listener. Oh, yeah, I'm just while I'm writing this, I'm trying to think of a better way to handle these dialogues. I don't really. Well, it'd be nice if I could somehow freeze the, like, show dialogue and then freeze the code and it would return true or false, but I don't think there's an easy way to do that. Oh, let's just do that E. So, um, if E dot press index is zero, then we can queue the event. Let's queue dialogue. Oh, also, I should only do this if the, our dialogue visible um, flag is true. So we'll queue that and then just close dialogue. Actually, we would close the dialogue even if the index is not zero. So let's see. If press index is zero. Okay, so I think this is good. Although, yeah, up here, when the parameters change, we should close the dialog. And also, on phase change, we should close the dialog. Uh, I guess F is interactable is false. Okay, well, let's go ahead and just try this out. All right, so when I try to set it to none. Oh, I did listen to it, but nothing happened. Oh, I bet I know the reason why. Two button dialogue I don't think ever activates itself. So dialogue game object set active true. Yeah, so that should make it visible. Still retrieved it, but it's not active. Yeah, it didn't do anything. Oh, again, I did this backwards. So it should be if dialog equals null, we return. I don't know why I've been doing that lately. There we go. So changing the slot to that type will disconnect the player. Again, this is just a temporary warning, so it's fine. So I'd say cancel. Okay, well, nothing actually happened, but yeah, this text should revert when that happens. Because I'm not kicked or anything. But if I try it, um, well, it still doesn't work. So let's just switch up to player and then back to none. 
And if I click OK, then yeah, it did kick me. So it does work. It's just not super, like, it's not extensible. It's like, and it leaves too much work in the hand of the this manager here, I think. It'd be nice if I had like a helper class that I could just instantiate here and say, okay, do something if okay, something if false. And then I could easily close it. Maybe that's the way to do it. Um, we can try that or at least start it. I. I have well, it's just like five minutes, but anyway, so what I need to do, um, I guess else. Oh, well now I need to remember the original click item. So that's another thing here. So private int dialog original index. I guess what I could really do is just call this match parameters. It's a little overkill, but match params. I think yeah, this will just refresh to um, yeah, refresh the drop down to the values from the lobby parameters, which wouldn't have been changed if you cancel. So none and cancel, it goes back to player. And I can switch to spectator, that's fine. That's not good. When I do that, the server shuts down. You can see it there. Hello, you. Uh, oh, yeah, the username doesn't get ref our set to null if you do that. Okay, so we're making some progress there. Um, let me just maybe start a bit on that dialogue thing. Because, like, it'd be really nice if I could just do something and then just kind of fire and forget right now I feel like I have to store too much information okay so maybe the trick yeah is instead of using these events I'll just have like a two button dialogue helper or something um, button, dialogue, helper. And this will have functions like is shown and public. Yeah, show. I guess it should be try show because if it's already shown, then you can't. Like if somebody already has control of this, you can't tr show it. Public void close. Oh, uh, well, let's not do that actually. If you, so if you show, then you would just erase over what's already there. And this would have title. Um. Okay, let's see, public void set text. And then I'll have maybe something else to set a button. I don't know, something like this. And then we'll have yeah, callbacks. Um. I'm 
this isn't good actually. Well, I don't know. You just always will need to call these. Anyway, yeah, it'll just be an action. So on OK and action on cancel. That's fine. It's still, of course, this dialogue doesn't really interact with other dialogues, but I just don't know. Would there even be any other dialogues? Like, I just don't know if I have to worry about that or not. Because it seems like this two dialogue helper would probably just go on top of anything else. Like, there's no reason that this would spawn another dialogue. So I guess that's fine. So I think this will work better instead of using these events. Because, yeah, the only drawback to events is that um, it gets a little confusing when there's all these diff- when you kind of use them as method calls. I feel like that's the wrong way to do it because it leads to some kind of, like, spaghetti code. And it's- especially for something that's- you can turn on and off because you have to- there's no way to tell like if it's on or off without you keeping track of that variable yourself. Um, so yeah, I found that that doesn't ever really feel like a good way to use the event, event system. Basically, we'll just have this dialogue helper class that you can grab. Um, and then you'll set these things. Now, I guess the question is, do I want... Well, I guess the really important thing is just always set this before show. But you could theoretically not do the title or body. Like, I could... It might even be better just to have these as, like, accessors, but... This is the general idea. Okay, well, I guess we'll implement this tomorrow. And um, it's not really going to be that difficult. And I think it will clean up a lot because I'll be able to remove like these state variables. Because I'll be able to just get a reference to the helper. And then there I can see if the dialogue is, vis is visible. It might even be nice... I can tell if I am the controller of this. How would I do that? Public tool. That's a good question. As control, and then I don't know what I would pass, some kind of object. Cause that'd be the only other thing because the problem well maybe i could just like pass an object to it which could even be this drop down manager object itself and then i could check to see if the controlling object is me obviously somebody could overwrite that but i mean i don't feel like i have to protect against my own code <laughs> um yeah i guess we'll see but that would be nice because I just realized somebody else could have a dialogue open, and when that happens, I don't want to assume that it has anything to do with the type drop down menu. I guess the other option is that if the type drop down menu spawns its own instance of this helper, and that way we could see. Yeah, that way we wouldn't have to change the callbacks and everything every time. Um, could do that as well. Is dialogue shown? So let's see, one instance shared or every dialogue user has their own helper. I guess this would be easier to see who 
has control. I think this second one might be better just for that reason. But anyway, I need to get going. So thanks everybody for coming by and watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you have um, well, as good a Monday as possible. Um, I'll be back tomorrow at about noon Eastern. So feel free to um, follow me here on Twitch or you can follow on Twitter as well. I always post when I go live. Um, I have a YouTube channel where you can check out how the game used to look. I always um, post up all my stream VODs there if you'd like to check them out. And then I have a Discord server. I am try to be on there most of the day. So yeah, feel free to join if you'd like to chat with me. I'll have um, links in chat here, or you can check out the video description if you're watching on YouTube. But yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, yeah, I better go get something to eat and go do some other work. So yeah, have a great day, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.